In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to convert color images to black and white in Photoshop. Um, a lot of people now shoot with digital cameras, which give always a color image, and converting it to black and white in Photoshop can be quite a challenge, because if you simply convert the image to grayscale, or desaturate it, remove the color saturation, you often get a very, very flat, gray, lifeless image. Um, I'm going to use this example here, a house with a nativity scene in front of it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the image. That way we'll still keep our original color image untouched here to look at. Now if we go up here to image, mode, grayscale, this converts it to grayscale and removes all the color, but you can see the picture looks terrible. It's very flat, um, very gray, doesn't have um, doesn't have any sparkle in the midtones, doesn't have any good lights or lights or darks. You can remedy this to some extent by increasing contrast with curves. And that does make it look a bit better, but it starts to it starts to look a little bit heavy handed, like the dark areas are going too dark, but they still don't have any contrast with them. Now there's a better way to do this, and Photoshop starting with Photoshop CS4, I believe, I'm using CS5, introduced a black and white conversion tool that we can use. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'm going to duplicate our original color again. And we're going to do this using adjustment layers, that way we can make changes to whatever we do. Um, if you go to the layers palette down here, you'll find that one of the adjustment layers is called black and white choose that and the image gets converted to black and white and we'll see up here under the adjustments palette you'll see different color listed reds, yellows, greens and so on and you can actually change the lightness of the different colors in order to make color stand out or recede in the black and white image you can actually control what tones different colors get mapped to when they convert to black and white um, this looks a little bit flat the way it is, and it usually does. Um, there is an auto button here you can push. For many images, I do like the effect that that gives, but sometimes I don't. This one here, when we've clicked on the auto, you can see that it's it's given better separation between the different colors on the statues here in the, in the nativity scene. If we go back up here to our history and undo that switch to the auto, we can see the changes it made gives a little bit better separation in here and it also makes the grass have a little bit more more interior contrast within the grass. It makes it makes it look like it's got a little more detail. Now this doesn't always work for every image. There's some pictures that I think that it's better off staying with the default. There's other ones where neither the auto or the default really looks good. And then you'll want to go into moving these sliders and you can see here by lightening the red or darkening the red the effect that it's having on the red tones, because here's the red stuff in the original image, and we can see it here, lightening and darkening. Same with here on Joseph's, um, the red parts of his cloak here. And we can do that with any of the colors if we need to get separation between two different colors that end up turning the same shade of gray in the conversion. We can fix that by adjusting them here. Now, once I've got this basic um, conversion looking the way I want. It still looks too flat. It still needs more contrast. And to do that, we'll go down here to the layers thing again, and we'll do a curves adjustment layer. And usually I'll put a point right in the center to act as a pivot. When we raise the highlights, it'll also darken the shadows and give us increased contrast. Now that's starting to look pretty good. Um, the dark areas here have a little bit more life in them than they had when we did this with the convert to grayscale version. But we can still manipulate this a little bit. We can we can bring the darks down or up by manipulating our curve. And on CrawfordPhotoSchool.com and on YouTube I have tutorials, a written and a video tutorial showing how to use curves and how to use adjustment layers. And I think curves and adjustment layers are things that you need to learn how to use. They're very, very powerful image editing tools. Now this scene was shot in the evening, very close to when it was starting to get dark, so this look with the sky being a little bit little bit darker like this and the the overall lighting looks pretty close to 
what I would expect a black and white picture to look like for this, although I would like to see a little bit more detail in these dark tones, because you can see here this really isn't that dark in the original. It's hard to do that because a lot of times the black and white conversions, you really just need to give them more contrast so that they end up looking good in the midtones. Let's go back to our black and white conversion here and see if we can maybe raise the greens a little bit. But that's not really having much of an effect on these dark greens here within these pine needles. So let's see what we can what we can manipulate to change that. Well, this may be something we're going to have to adjust later by doing a little bit of dodging and burning in here. I think it looks pretty good, the rest of it. Maybe just a little bit too much contrast. Let's go back up here and bring that down. Let's see if we can lighten this stuff up just a little bit too. Yeah, that, that brings us a little more detail. Now, one thing you have to do too with these black and white conversions is they need they need some local contrast enhancement, which is something you can't do with curves. That's something that's actually done using unsharp masking, and what it does is it expands the tones a bit to give you a little bit more differenti differentiation between very close tones. And in order to do that, we're going to take the image we have and we're going to flatten it, get rid of the layers. And then we'll go up here to the filter and choose under sharpen, unsharp mask and you can see how it's really brought a lot more contrast into the image there. Now the amount of this change is going to be determined by the settings we use for the Unsharp Mask. There are three settings. There's the amount, there's the radius, and the threshold. The threshold I usually leave at zero. Um, Unsharp masking can do two different things. You can use it to sharpen an image, or you can use it to increase contrast within an image. If you're going to sharpen an image, you would use a small radius setting, usually something less than one, and then a larger amount setting, which would give you higher sharpness within the image. Now, we're not trying to sharpen this picture. What we want to do here is we want to increase contrast. And to do that, you use a very large radius, By using a large radius, you're not going to see sharpening at the pixel level of detail. It's just going to increase contrast. And so, usually I use a radius of about 38, 38 or 39. And as you change the amount, you can see how the amount of contrast then changes. And so here we've got a setting of 20% sharpening, 38.6 pixel radius. Let's see how much that changes the image. It's a subtle change, but it just gives you a little bit more contrast. See how it brings out the tones in the roof and in the star here? When we do that, I, think I might give it just a little bit more, more amount. Yeah, see, that really makes the image pop. So we'll go ahead and say OK on that. I think that looks pretty good the way it is. I think if I were going to work this image anymore, I might go in here and lighten up this stuff here a little bit with a with a layer mask. Actually, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, this is going to be real imprecise because I'm not doing this as a exhibition quality picture, just for demonstration. So I'll kind of draw around this area that needs to darken. Um, hit the letter Q to go into the quick mask mode use a Gaussian blur to blur the edges of our selection.
Now, this is explained in more detail in one of my other video tutorials, and I also have a written tutorial on crawforphotoschool.com showing how to do dodging and burning using these kind of layer masks that I'm getting ready to do. Now, once we've got the edges of the selection blurred, we hit the letter Q again to get out of the quick mask mode, down to our layers palette, choose curves, and now we can see we can lighten up the area that I selected. And if I were being more precise with this, I would have tried to get some of this area in here too. That way it would all look the same tone. Just darken that down a bit. It's a little bit unnatural. Yeah, let's leave it like that. I think that's a pretty good conversion. Now there are other ways to do these conversions. Um, a much easier way is to use a specialized plugin that's made for black and white conversions. And there are several plugins on the market for Photoshop. Um, Topaz Black and White Effects is one that's a, a very, very good one. Um, in fact, that's the one that I use most of the time when I actually do this. Um, Nick Silver Effects Pro is another one that's very popular and very good. Um, DxO Film Pack and Alien Skin Exposure are two other choices. Um, these plugins really make this a lot easier because they do the localized contrast enhancement you need automatically for you. And they give you a little bit more control over um, over the uh, the way the different colors render. It's a it's a much easier way to do it, but it costs you money. Um, the cheapest of these plugins costs about fifty dollars. The most expensive one, I believe, is about one hundred and fifty. So the method I'm showing you here is an easy way to do this in Photoshop if you don't want to spend the money to buy a plugin. Um, it's as you can see, it still involves quite a number of steps. So it's it's not you know the one the one control like the plugins where you open up the plugin window, you set everything you want, hit OK, and it's done. This does take a little more work, but it'll save you money. Let's go ahead and try another example here. Um, this one here is a is a somewhat difficult one because most of the tones are quite dark. But we also have the real brightly lit Santa face here. And this is a picture I really think is just incredible in color. But it can make a beautiful black and white picture too. And we're going to do this the same way we did the first one. Um, let's go ahead and duplicate it so we can keep our original. Now we'll go down here to the Layers palette, we'll choose black and white, and now this looks very, very flat and dull. This is going to need a, a lot more contrast, and it seems like that the different colors really aren't separating each other well. If we look at the original, the, there's a lot of contrast here between these different colors, even if all these lights are basically the same grayscale tone. Let's see what the uh, auto setting here gives us. It gives a little bit better separation. Let's try. Um, I don't want to raise. I don't want to increase the red because that makes it kind of disappear. Um, changing the greens isn't really affecting anything. Some of these really, if you look here where I'm manipulating the cyan, you can see that there's only very small areas really changing because there's these little points of very saturated color. I think I may just leave this as it is, just use the, the auto settings, I think that really came out looking nice. And then, let's go down here and add a little more contrast. And we'll do this the same way as before, make a curves adjustment layer. I don't want this dark areas to go quite that dark, so we'll raise them back up a bit. One thing that's nice about curves is you can manipulate the dark tones, the mid tones, and the highlights separately on the curve. Now, these very light areas on Santa's face are going a little too bright, so we'll pull down this very top part up here, bring a little more detail back in that. I think that's about the best we're going to get out of it. It does need some local contrast enhancement, so we'll do that with Unsharp Mask just like we did with the first one. So we'll go up to Layer flatten the image. I wish Photoshop would introduce an unsharp mask layer so that we could do all this with, with adjustment layers. I'm clearing a guide because I must have accidentally pulled one out here on the side. I saw a little blue line there. We'll go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And now we can see, using the settings we used for the first one, 36% amount, 38.6 radius um, has brought quite a lot more 
contrast in. It's really it's really separated out these tones here in the curtains behind the head. It gives a much livelier picture than what we got before. Let's try to increase the amount and see what we get. And it starts getting a little bit too too contrasty, I think. Um, let's see what happens if we raise the radius. For a picture of this size, using a radius much bigger than 30 really doesn't seem to make much difference. The exact settings you use for this are going to depend on the file size. If you have a very large file, let's say you have like a one of those 80 megapixel medium format camera backs, or you have a very large scan from a film negative, you're going to be able to use higher settings than you're going to use on a smaller digital image. This was shot in a Can Canon 5D Mark II, so it's 21 megapixel image, Fair fairly large size, but um, you can definitely work with bigger images if you're scanning medium format or large format negatives or if you have one of the digital backs. I think for this size image these settings work pretty well for most for most images. It gives you just that little bit of contrast boost you need. So let's go ahead and hit OK on that. This is a picture too that might benefit a bit from having a little bit of a a little bit of toning done to it. Just as we did in the dark room, you could do CP toning, selenium toning, and we can simulate that in Photoshop using the uh, hue and saturation control. If you're working with a black and white image, you hit colorize and it colorizes the image. And you can change the color by going with the hue here. I'm going to use this kind of a warmish color and if we pull the saturation down it gives you a subtle sort of warm or sepia tone and since this is in a layer we can turn it on and off and see the effect and I, I really like how that looks in this one now if you look at it side by side with the color image the color image doesn't have nearly the contrast from light to dark that we need in the black and white one and that's because a color picture doesn't really need that. Color pictures thrive on contrast between different colors rather than light and dark contrast. When you convert to black and white, you need a more dramatic light to dark contrast in order to make the subject stand out. And so that's really worked well in this one. And I think this is this is a pretty good con this is a pretty good conversion. I don't think I could have really done any better using one of the plugins that I that I have. Um, what I've just shown you here will work for almost any color image from a digital camera or scanned film if you scanned a color negative or color transparency this stuff will work for that too one thing I don't like a lot of one thing I don't like about a lot of the plugins is that they add artificial film grain to try to simulate the look of a film like say Tri-X or or Ilford Delta 3200 that has grain that artificial grain always looks terrible. It doesn't look natural at all. It doesn't look anything, to me, at least to my eye, it does not look anything like the grain you see in real film that's been scanned. And so by doing this, we're getting a very, these are very, very clean images. Very sharp and detailed and smooth with no grain. Now we're looking at this one at 100% actual pixels and there's a little subtle amount of graininess that's in there and that's basically just noise from the camera this was shot with the camera on its ISO 400 setting and that's still actually quite a bit finer grain and sharper than you would get from shooting you know actual triax in a 35 millimeter camera So let's take a look at what we got here as our final images. This one here actually could benefit from being toned too, I think. Let's try the same tone we used for the Santa one. It actually looks maybe a little bit too warm on this image because this image has a lot more lights and midtones than what this did. Um, let's pull the saturation down just slightly. That's up to personal opinion, though. Some of you may look at it and say you like the warmer version better. But I think that these are these are excellent results, I think, from the two images that we worked on. And this was done entirely using 
tools that are found in Photoshop, no expensive plugins or anything were used for them. 